that style of football, and like you talked when you were talking at halftime about the, the the play leading up to the goal, a lot of movement, a lot of one touch play. Rafa Silva, who's he's been around a while at the club. He's he's twenty nine now, but he's, he's, they look like they're enjoying themselves. Do you think it'll it'll suit them and suit the the style of play that, as Brian talks about, synonymous with Portuguese football? I, I think so, but it's important to see how the, the season wears on. Obviously, they're going to be predominant in their league and, and they've started off brilliantly but then they're going to get the group stage of the Champions League and all of a sudden if you're starved of possession you know if you get stuck into the last stage of the Champions League how you deal with that have you got a plan B can you soak up pressure counter attack so there's a lot of unanswered questions for them but as a, an owner of Benfica if you went for a change of style brought in a different manager you've been given exactly what you asked for um, mm. now whether they can do that and win the Portuguese League um, remains to be seen and whether they can get to the quarterfinals yeah, you, the you only league. finished toured last year yeah. a long way away a long way behind both Sporting and Porto so they have a bit to do to get I mean that's a big deal for them there's a lot of money in this 15 million getting into group stages if they get through but the, the, domestically they've got to be challenging with with that's that's the minimum expectation, isn't it? Like, like we don't win yeah. the league there. Yeah. But yeah. what about the model? That you, you see it. You just look at the ins and outs of, of the, the the transfer window of the summer. It sold 100 millions worth of talent, not just Darwin Nunes, but you know Everton went. This even sold Jota to Celtic, who'd been on loan and getting money in, doing great business and investing it. And it just it's just the way of things. Well, it goes on and on with, with Portuguese football. They can't retain the players because of the wages that are available in in the other countries. And that's it, it's a brilliant model, but you've got to produce excellent players for someone to be paying whatever the figures are, whether 40, 50, 60, 70 million. Clubs will only do that because they know they're getting real quality. They've been brought up in a brilliant system of, of coaching, competition levels, underage international teams, always successful. I used to love it. I used to enjoy taking on the Portuguese international teams because they used to say they're the measure because they have yeah. great technical ability, not huge physically, as I said earlier, but always good technically and a great mentality about them. So um, clubs are happy to take them. They're very adaptable. They have the good relationship with South America. They get bring players in. See tonight, South Americans, Brazilians, Argentinian, young players coming in. But from from their impact. point of view, from like, say, if you're a fan of a Portuguese club, very frustrating. You can never really aspire to maybe. No, win in what the they do in the sixties when they won the Champions League twice. Yeah. No, but even if they held on to them players, Tom, is winning the Champions League a viable? You know, if you hold on to those superstars, I don't think it is. You know, but certainly that model, they think should be good enough to win the Portuguese League and that's what yeah. they're after winning the and Portuguese League they got to the qualifying of the Champions League so I mean look it's a great model and I mean to turn a profit like you just said there for any football club is incredible 